Welcome back to the Craft Beer Channel. Oh my just God. came to me right then, nice. just just as I had my hand out. Uh, <laughs> so uh, this week we are going to be talking about the Doppelbock. Nice. Which is a strong, very strong, dark lager. Now we've done some German videos before, and particularly our Oktoberfest taster video, yeah. which started very silly. I think we should start this one sensible because it's clearly going to go off the rails later. I mean, these beers are ridiculously strong, Johnny. I'm yeah. a little bit worried we, about we this. We peak at 8.5 and we, what's the opposite of peak? <laughs> Trough at about six and a half. So. What are we worried about? It'd be fine. <laughs> what's the worst that could happen? So let's start with the history, right? We've yeah. done a video on Bock you can watch. But Bradley, you've mm. been brushing up on your Bock history. Bock to the future. <laughs> Tell me about Box. So Box are uh, dark, strong lagers, uh, originally uh, hailing from uh, Einbeck. Goodness me, in right. northern Germany. Yeah, go on. Uh, I believe in around the 14th century. Uh, I might be wrong on that, but they were sort of uh, transpo transported through time and space and then brewed more <laughs> so, more famously, in Munich yeah. by you know, Bavarian space. brewers. Space. Not so much time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. That was a bit later in time, though. So, so we have the, these dark, probably at the time, slightly smoky lagers, or actually probably ales uh, coming from Einbeck. Yeah. They, essentially, the Munich... The people of Munich, people of Bavaria loved these beers. Yeah. But then the Thirty Years' War started in which northern Germany was all Protestant and southern Germany was uh, Catholic, popey. So they had a problem. Yeah, so they didn't want to start drinking Protestant, uh, continue drinking Protestant yeah. beer. Yeah, so they, they loved the beer. Norris, but they loved the beer. So that's where we think maybe Bock started being brewed um, okay. in, in southern Germany where all of these beers. And when it, where it went from Einbeck to Bock. To Bock, yeah. Right. So okay. some kind of twist in, tran in translation and yeah. pronunciation there. And the brewery that started the Doppelbock fashion... Lunatics. ...is right here, Paulana. Although it wasn't called Paulana back then. So let me tell you briefly the history of Paulana. So yeah, so 1634 is yeah. supposedly the start, which fits with the narrative of the Thirty Years' okay. War. I like it. Uh, starting all this. And it was the, 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 the monks that started Paulana, it was, it was a monastery, um, were actually from Italy. Italian German monks. Italian monks moving to Bavaria. Right, okay. Uh, and they started brewing beer and selling beer completely illegally. It was supposed to just be for them, but clearly they were selling um, They're like selling some of their tasty squatter beer. monks that squatter don't monks. don't like sunshine. <laughs> Wanted to leave the beautiful Italy. Well southern okay. Germany's still very sunny as well. well. I, I wouldn't as, worry about it's that. It's not as sunny, but yeah. Um, first record we have of the beers being made by Paulana is actually a complaint. Uh, a letter written in complaint to the to the rulers saying not only are the Paulana monks brewing beer and selling it, it's very good beer. It's causing issues for the actual licensed breweries. Around. It's better than the better than licensed. Maybe it was breweries. better. I'm not. I'm not quite sure. Jealousy. Eh? Certainly, yeah. there were some issues, and that's that's how we know that they were brewing and selling to everybody else. This complaint letter that was written. Wow. Boo hoo! It's not fair. Boo hoo! Yeah. Well, yeah, yeah. Boo hoo! Letter <laughs> from all the breweries that weren't breaking the law. Wow, that's yeah. great. I love that. Now the story goes that the Doppelbock, this this stronger lager, was first brewed to sustain the monks during Lent, during the fasting of Lent, um, when you wouldn't be able to eat basically when the sun was up. Right. Now, that's kind of true, but we think that do the first Doppelbock was brewed actually for a feast. Hmm. That sounds more likely. Yeah, exactly, yeah. yeah. Um, the feast of St. Paula, so the, 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 the very saint that these monks were chanting. Paula, yeah. Paulana. Okay. Exactly that. Right. Yeah. Um, so we think that it was a special beer brewed for this feast, which... If the dates fail, so the, the day of St. Paula is early, uh, uh, 2nd of April, I think, every right. year, which meant that Easter, which changes, sometimes it would have been within Lent, sometimes it wouldn't have been. So we're basically pretty sure that even during Lent, these monks were having a feast. These cheap, are these still the Italian monks? These are still the Italian monks. They just love life, don't they? They're like, we don't care about your rules, we're going to make double strong beer, we, they, we're going to have a feast in Lent where you're not supposed to be feasting. They actually loved rules. Okay. Because, um, well, they were vegan. Okay, it's a bit of a rubbish feast then. Go on, <laughs> Go on feast. So, so feast. St. Some, some was against cruelty of any kind, so he would refuse to kill animals to eat. I'm, I'm with, I'm with St. Paula. That's a good, that's a good place to be. But it yeah. does match your diet. I mean, I, I try and eat less meat these days, Johnny. Right, okay. So this beer was brewed, everyone was invited to the vegan feast, um, but apparently everybody had turned up, I guess because it was Lent, people might have been fasting, it was a good excuse to, to yeah. actually have a meal. Yeah. Um, right. 
Which would have been probably just bread, oil and herbs because you wouldn't have had fish or meat feast, or anything feast. like that. But so they brewed this special beer and it was very, very popular with the locals. Um, and so they did it again the next year and the next year and the next year and the next year. And they kept doing it because it was generating revenue. It was probably getting them to talk to people, preach the word of God. Yeah. And it became this pretty much annual festival. Do you think it got so popular because everyone was drunk? And have, it, oh, have a good time, right? Yeah, because they weren't eating any proteins. And also, like, you know, you say they're preaching the word of God. They're probably drunk monks just going, right, mate, have you heard about God? He's great. He's great. Let's have a, let's have a vegan feast. We'll all party down together. <laughs> Don't think about the fact that there's no beer. Now, interestingly, this wouldn't have actually been that strong back then. So it would have been, we think, because uh, it, was, it was a winter beer, so it would have yeah. been sort of short lagered. It would have been very sweet, very smoky, very dark. <laughs> But clearly people enjoyed it, maybe because it was a time of year where you wouldn't get to drink and eat quite so much. So this is this is the thing about this beer. It's a special beer. It's associated with celebration, right? Exactly. It's not an everyday beer. Exactly, right. exactly okay. that. So it might have been, you know, it might have had extra malt in it, right. might have had extra hops in it, it might have been a bigger beer, but it wouldn't have been that strong simply because their yeast didn't attenuate that far back then. So it would have been very sweet, which is probably what everybody really, really liked. Loved now it. this one day of celebration mm. turned into eight days of celebration. Oh over the years, not quite sure why. Um, a bit like, you know, Oktoberfest started with a wedding and suddenly it's a three week long <laughs> drinking celebration in Munich. They're like rave monks. Rave monks, so yeah, it's a, it's they a, like, say. like literally a week long festival. Yeah. Of drinking. Of drinking. And feasting. Yeah. And so all the other breweries in Munich obviously started to get involved in this. So what was originally, uh, well, so I haven't even told you, so Salvatore, yeah, which Salvatore. is the, the name for this original yeah, yeah. beer, doesn't come, like, it sounds like it might be like Salvation yeah, or something. Yeah, that's what I assumed, like yeah, yeah. Not true. Okay. It actually comes from Sankfarter's Fest. Who? Sankfarter's Beer. Like the father. Sank... Saint Father's Beer. Saint Father's Beer became Sounds like Salvatore. Father Christmas, no? Uh, yeah, I mean, that was St. Nicholas. That was a different dude. Okay. Now, you'll notice we've got Salvatore. Yeah, yeah. Celebrator. Animator. This one, they phoned it in. I don't even know how to pronounce that. Triumphator? Terminator? Term Terminator 2? Uh, we've had the Troganator from Troganator. We have had Troganator, that was great. Uh, and then Maximator. I am so hyped for Maximator. <laughs> that's the best yeah. name on the table. It is pretty good. And all of these are served during what's called Stark Beer Fest. Strong yeah. Beer Festival. Come on. Which is, essentially it's Oktoberfest. Yeah. But it's in March, ends on the 2nd of April, yeah, yeah, yeah. and all the beers are 8% and dark. In Munich still? In Munich still. It's Sick. The, the Salvatore one is held on the Nockerberg, which is the hill in Munich where nice. well, the monks were at the bottom of it. Uh, I've been to that a couple of times. We do have a video. We've referenced it a couple of times because I got probably the drunkest I've ever been. <laughs> I mean, I'm definitely falling off my chair when I go to this Oh, so many chairs. I mean, <laughs> it was like the chairs weren't there by the end. Wow. Um, but it's it's a wonderful festival. It's much more kind of Germanic in, in the people that are there and the music yeah, played. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's less sort of tinged with tourism than Oktoberfest. Yeah, less, it, less Robbie Williams angels. Yeah, well, no, that still happens. Is that serious? Where we go, where we pray at all. That still happens. Oh, okay. yeah. right, right, right. Um, so all of these beers, basically the beers we think, the recipes would have been changed over the centuries. They would have got stronger, but also the attenuation, our brewing processes improved. So even the same recipe would have got stronger and stronger and stronger. Makes but sense. the recipes have changed. So all of these beers are very strong. And that's in the Bock tradition as well, which mm. was a little bit stronger. Um, so now, with the history out of the way, we're going to taste all of these beers, say what we think of them, and then go to bed. So this is this is the originator. This is the original. Originator. Originator. Yeah. Although we think this recipe, it's a couple of centuries younger than the original. Okay. This actual recipe. Yeah. I think it's brother banana ba banana bus. No, <laughs> Barnabas. Brother bana banana bus. Who, who came along a couple of years later, revolutionised Paulana's brewery, yeah. improved it massively. We think this is closer to his recipe. Brother banana boat. But <laughs> that's all I'm going to think now. So you know, he said banana boat. I'm getting banana, but that's not true. It's, ca it's caramelised. It's very caramelised. Toffied. My understanding is these are like maltier versions of an already quite malty beer. Yeah, well, I mean, box would have been, I mean, all beers would have been very malty back then. The hops yeah. were a preservative. But yeah, I mean, these beers should be pretty hoppy. We should get a good old whack of bitterness when we drink them, because otherwise they will be way too sweet. Mm. I mean, this beer is eight and a half percent. Bloody hell. And there's no alcohol in that. No. It is just, it's just glorious toffee. 
And candied lemon is, mm. is what I get from that. Wow, a smooth drinking, man. Yeah. It's it's dangerous. Like at the festival, it's served by the litre still. And you have the first one and you're necking it, you're loving life, the pretzels are coming around, the music's blaring, it's an incredible experience. The first one disappears. The second one, you've got a little buzz on, you're loving life, you're chatting to your friends, you've loosened up, some food arrives, the next one disappears. Number three's a struggle. <laughs> Number three you don't remember. And you're... Number three, yeah. Wow, that's crazy. It, it's, it's remarkable how easy drinking these beers are, but equally you do reach a limit, and they do serve like the pale, pale lagers as well at these festivals, because... It's deeply irresponsible to encourage people just to stay on these beers. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, that is that is so palatable. It's unreal. There's mm. not a hint of like alcohol burn on that at all. No, it's it's just liquid caramel, as far as I'm concerned. Yeah, and it has a it has it does have a sort of sweet bread kind of quality to it, like a not like a brie, maybe a briochey kind of Cro thing. croissant. Croissant, maybe a, like a slight croissant. How do you type. pronounce croissant? Yeah, cro croissant. Croissant. Cro I don't know. People were picking up in the comments, and I was like. Croissant? Cressel? Creasel? Creasel? Anyway, yes. Enriched bread, toffee, caramel. Yeah. It's not as bitter as I remember. No. You know, when I've been at Stark Beer Fest, the beer is so incredibly fresh. You know, it's been released days before and it does feel really bitter. Really? Okay. Yeah. Um, this one, not so much. So, potentially, <clears throat> when drinking these, drink them as fresh as you can get them. Yeah, I mean, lag lagers, as much as an IPA, drink them fresh. Yeah, 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 yeah. They've already sat in tank for as long as it's That's a good so point. So that was the Originator. Yeah. Big fan <laughs> of the origi nice. Originator. Now we're on to Celebrator. Yeah, which is a great name because it great is name. a beer all about celebration. Celebration. Yeah. Now, it's got goats on it, Johnny. Yes. From my not very extensive research, I've discovered that bock means goat. Right? Can also mean goat. So I know when it, it went from being uh, brewed in... Uh, the Hanseatic uh, town of Einbeck, and then transposed... <laughs> now only known as the Hanseatic, Hanseatic town of Einbeck. town of Einbeck. Transposed to uh, Munich at a later date, Johnny. Yeah. The Munich people supposedly pronounce it Bock rather than Beck. Yeah. Which also means, uh, goat. means billy goat. Yeah. Right? So then it becomes a thing where they sort of call it the goat, the greatest of all time. Right. And they, they sort of, you know, paste their... their uh, their box with with pictures of goats. With goats. So we've got. So I'm into. Actually, there's no goat on this guy. Yeah. Or oh, this guy is these two. Yeah, those these two. are the yeah, only yeah, two yeah, goats. Yeah. They are the only two yeah. goats. So, speaking of goats, though, th this is supposedly the goat, right? This really? is the yeah, one yeah, that yeah, everyone yeah. raves about. Celebrate. Oh. This is supposedly the best. It's also the weakest at six point five, six point seven. Let's see if it is. It's much darker than the first one. This is black. This is so dark. And John. the head is. Um, I mean, they're dark lagers, but I mean, this is real caramel. dark. More, less caramel, more dried red fruits. Hmm. It's not, but is it goji berry? Is that the one you have on like okay. muesli and stuff? So you're saying it's a superfood? It's a superfood, yeah. <laughs> exactly. Well, that's what the monks would have treated it as for yeah. one. Goji berry. One slash eight days of the year. So yeah, it's dried red fruits. It does, it does have a, yeah, like you're saying, like caramel. A, a, a red fruit, fleshy sort of thing yeah. going on. Yeah. Okay. I mean, that's that's like really malty compared to the last one, I think. Yeah, almost roasty. Yeah. Um, still really low bitterness, but yeah, roasted dryness, chocolatey coffee notes, certainly on the finish. Lingering coffee note. Yeah. But then, yeah, toffee and red fruits up front. It's much more complex. That is liquid caramel. This to me is, yeah, it's red fruits, it's coffee, it's dark chocolate. It, it, the, the, the bitterness comes into play a lot more, I think, with the with, with the kind of roasty malt. Yeah, it feels more alcoholic, right? right? Because it's it's it has a sort of body to it, and um, it does have a richer body as well yeah. somehow. Yeah, it's interesting because yeah, with with lower ABV and possibly drier, it should be thinner, but it feels pretty luxurious. Yeah, and is that is that something to do with the mouthfeel and the sort of carbonation? It's quite <coughs> it's, it's quite a sort of effervescent, like small bubble kind of. Yeah, like it could be spunded. Going. Uh, which I, I doubt, I know, I'd, I'd imagine this is false carbonated. Maybe this one has some natural carbonation, which is yeah. usually a bit finer. Or maybe, you know, there's, there's, you know, certain combinations of malts and processes can, can create slightly more mouthfeel. Slightly higher hopping rate can create that. There's lots of ways they could do it, but the result is, you know, you've lost um, nearly 2% alcohol, but you haven't lost anybody. No. And you've, you've gained complexity. 
So I probably would drink a lot more of this. It's really good. It's really, really good. And like, if we're talking about festivals that you might drink it at, Johnny, I'm drinking this on Easter Sunday with my Easter eggs, because I think this would be great oh, with yeah, chocolate, right? Great. Smash up some Easter egg chocolate, drink some of this, some Celebrator in go. the morning eight or... It's great. Beer number two, Bradley. Beer number two. <laughs> yeah. I just got my bottle open, right? I don't need it. It's a pop top. Or would you call them a Heineken top? No, Gross, 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 top. gross, gross top. top. Gross top. Gross top. Like a ruddy amber. Ruddy is a good word for what we're doing. Yeah. Um, if you have a look at the, the bubbles from underneath, Johnny. I don't know if this because I'm drunk now. <laughs> Why are there bubbles that are sort of below the surface? Like frog spawn. Well, that's what all beers look like from underneath, Bradley. Maybe I've never looked at a beer from underneath. Well, why such would you? Way. Idiot or... <laughs> Caramel. Again. Yeah, it's going back a little bit towards I mean, the, the, last, the first one. Made bit. in the same brewery. Uh, oh, These right. two. So... Oh, yeah, I was like, it's, it's going back towards the, the first one. Yeah. Kind of the same first one. It's a shade weaker. Yeah, OK. 8. Is it weaker? 8.1. Yeah. 8.5. 8. That's 1. crazy when we're, that's, that's weaker. Yeah. Fuck. Crazy. It's got a slight... Um, Acidic berry nut. What? Not my <laughs> uh, this is delicious. Yeah. I don't know if you can tell that through your nose. It smells very bready through, right. when yeah? I snorted it up my okay. nose. Good. Try, try it through the, the orifice that's actually designed for drinking, and it's very nice. That is good. It's very balanced. It's the most bitter of the three. I is think. it? I think I... this is a bit more bitter. Well, sorry. Hop bitter. Perceived bitter. Most hop bitter. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Roast bitterness. Yeah, this is no bitter. This is like drinking an iced coffee, this guy. Yeah, yeah, that's pretty close, yeah. Which I like. Without right? milk. Without the it's milk. It's a black, black iced coffee. Yeah. Th this one, it's all caramel, but I feel like there's sort of a, a licorice, that's what I'm looking for. It's like licorice isn't acidic, but it's. Yeah, like a sort of herbal mist. Yeah. yeah. To it. I thought I'd be more drunk at this point, Johnny. We've only, we've only had half a pint. That's true. This, this is the thing. When I did I'm glad my... we're not drinking Steins of it. Bloody well, hell. Well, yeah. I mean, I... so when I went to Stark Beer Fest, I think I had six. <sighs> six Steins? Six Steins. Six litres of, and it was the Paul Arnhem beer, eight and a half percent. I, don't, I, don't, I kind of don't believe you. I woke up with a broken umbrella in my bed, <laughs> and I don't remember leaving. This wasn't a craft beer channel trip. This was a trip when you worked in beer distribution. In beer distribution, yeah. Mm. These mm. guys party hard. Yeah. I distributed a lot of beer into my face. Oh, so fuck. now we're on to... Hang on. <laughs> you, wouldn't last... you wouldn't last an hour at Stark Beer Fest. Uh, so Leuvenbroi. Yeah. So this is another big six brewery. In fact, the only brewery that doesn't count as like a big six brewery in Munich is, is this one. Darker again. Not a lot of heads to this one, Johnny. No, I think I poured that maybe too carefully. Maybe it is there. But yeah, so we're back back in black. Oh, uh, well. Very dark brown. Yeah. New Newcastle brown colour, I call that. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Yeah, there's a, there's a little bit of red in there. But if it's... I was buying paint, Newcastle brown. <clears throat> Not as good an aroma as any of the others. It, it sort of smells like a fruitcake to me. <sighs> yeah. Fru uh, uh, yeah, fruitcakey. Maybe a li I get a teeny tiny bit of nail polish. Tiny bit of booziness. Yeah. So you've you've just you're just you freshly painted your nails. You're, While cutting, your, you're cutting your fruit cake, and you're getting a bit too close with your freshly. You haven't let them dry, Johnny. <laughs> Very sweet. No bitterness. No malt depth. No there's a, pop, there's a, No roast. There's a lot less going on. Yeah. Right. It's not a symphony. I don't think it's it's not. It's not sort of, of united duet. in. It's a, yeah, there's less going on for Maybe sure. Maybe a solo. It's just kind of malt. Yeah, yeah. I think this might be um, a busker on the street rather than a symphony. So right. it's like one guy. He's had one too many. But he's not very good. Buskinators. Yeah, he's a buskinator. <laughs> <laughs> should we should we take it to the maximator? Maximator. You know it. So these beers aren't that easy to get hold of. You know, they come out once a year, and yes. I mean, this brewery doesn't even technically export. So we're very lucky to have, have gotten hold of this, and I hope it's going to live up to it, because actually these guys make a wonderful Dunkel. People don't really talk about the, um, the Augustina Dunkel, but it's a great beer. Why well, would you, and the Hells, like, just world class. The Hells and the, and the Export, yeah. But I'm excited about this. I've never had this beer. I've, ha I've had all of those. I've never had this. Oh, it's dark. I'm not even going to smell this, Johnny, until you get it up to your nose. I, th I, th I think that's red. I think that's a red beer. It's, yeah, it's pretty maybe. red, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. 
rusty. The, the sort of colour disparity between them was interesting. I, I've been surprised by how much they varied. Is, yeah, I assumed they'd all actually be the colour of Celebrate it. So is that, are we, is that because the malt is like more important in this recipe than the other sort of uh, elements of beer? So they're, they're, they're choosing their malt bills. Some of them are choosing sort of darker malts. Yeah, others you know are what? Not yeah, I haven't much. really looked at it that way. Yeah, this, this is a malt forward beer, so it's no surprise there's changes in the malt bills. Because yeah, the colour is like heavily influenced by yeah. the, the malt you use. Yeah, exactly. And so they're trying to find their point of difference by varying the malts. So we've yeah. got all, all shades of autumn. Even though it's spring, yeah, which is a bit of an interesting. It's a bit of an interesting time, really, to have this kind of beer. It should be a, should be an autumn beer, really. Feels like it. Um, it's a beautiful looking beer. It is. Oh, I get a, I get fruit cake and marzipan. Marzipan. A bit of mar, bit of almond. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, that's not great. Nutty. Could, could be the malt. Nuttiness. Could be the malt. Could be the fermentation giving us a bit of nuttiness. Very nice indeed. It's not as complex as some of the others, yeah. But I think it's like super quaffable. It's it's got what I like about it is it's got the classic Augustina finish. Mm -hmm. You know, Augustina Hellas for me is often a little bit skunky, a little bit sulfury. It's the yeast has some real character. Yeah, real character. Yeah, and and it's not there on the aroma, but it's definitely there on the finish. It's a big aromatic, gassy, sulfury. <laughs> I'm making it sound I'm, I'm gonna so be, I'm going to be in trouble later drinking but, this, yeah. <laughs> no, I don't think you will. It is quaffable, but there is, there's like a little bit of something rogue. Yeah, because I mean, this is, the edges have been rounded, Way been too much. sanded to the point is, where there's nothing to it. This is a well-worn beach stone. Right, okay. This is like a fresh bit of glass. Bit of so that, that's like, sorry, that's like sea glass, should we say. Go on, yeah. And this is like, you've just smashed a car window and it's like, <laughs> it's going to cut you up. It's characterful, it's got a big old finish. None of these beers have had... Oh, the two best ones, I think, which yeah. is that one and that one, yeah. have had big finishes. I agree, man. Celebrate all. Go on, let's win. put them in order of favourite. I, I think that one, then that one, yeah. then that one. Yeah, I like this one. Then, yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah you happy with that? Yeah, 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 yeah. There you go. So best yeah. to worst. Yeah. Um, but all still 7 out of 10 beers. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's a 9 100%. Out of 10 beer. I mean... This is a great lineup of beers. You'd have a wonderful time. We've had a wonderful time. We have had a wonderful time, Johnny. We, we got slightly stuck in a rut halfway through with the Ator jokes. We've had a wonderful Ator time. Cutting room floor and Ator. <laughs> Cutting room floor and Ator. <laughs> Florinator would Flora. be a good name. I mean, the these are all Florinators if they you are. drink enough of them. Yeah. So that is the history of the Doppelbock and our analysis of five of the most available ones, four of which are from Munich, one of which isn't quite. Um, we think that this one is the best, so track down eyeing a celebrator if you can. Um, otherwise, there are lots of iterations being brewed all around the world, like Troganator, which we mentioned. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, in the UK, there's a couple of them about Utopian, make a great one. Um, so it's a style that I think is up and coming in spring. I think people are interested in 8% dark lagers. I mean, I gotta love the Germans for like taking an already strong lager and going, it's not strong enough, let's just make it stronger. Yeah. And darker. Yeah. I'll drink to that. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Cheers, Anator. Cheers, Anator. Cheers, Anator.